Hello and welcome to Start Collecting Adeptus Custodes Part 4 Relics. In this episode, we will individually review A to Z the 13 relics available to the Custodes and then rank them into either top tier, fringe, or trash tier. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and let me know what you think of the reviews or rankings below. Without further ado, let us begin. First up on this magical mystery tour, Auric Aquilus. Biker model only. Gives the model a 3++ invulnerable save. Allows you to re-roll failed charge rolls for the model. Well, we've started off with an absolute banger. This is one of the classic Custodes relics that almost every list sports and with good reason. This is a huge upgrade to your shield captain on jet bike and cannot be overstated how much this turns him into an absolute beat stick for you along with a massive help to getting you into close combat. Plus, who doesn't love a dark age of technology jet bike? Next up, Auric Shackles. Your opponent must subtract one from the attack's characteristic of enemy characters whilst within six inches of the bearer. This is a relic for character hunting for sure. It has been nerfed though since original printing as the last sentence has been removed, meaning you no longer get D3 extra victory points from killing the warlord in the fight phase. Honestly though, if you're considering taking this and you're running Shadowkeeper Shield Host, don't take this. Take their relic instead, the Stasis Oubliette, as it does everything this relic does, but better, and lets you reroll ones to wound to boot. Onto the ease now, starting with Eagle Eye. Improve this model's invulnerable save by 1 to a maximum of 3 plus invulnerable. Short, sweet, and devastatingly good, increasing your survivability in a game where 3 plus invulnerable saves are increasingly rare. This is one of the best custodies relics to take and helps your expensive characters stay alive longer. Next up, Emperor's Light, model with a Misericordia only. This replaces it and is the same profile as a Misericordia with a bolted on ability that any morale tests taken by enemy units within 12 inches add one to it. Clearly, we've peaked early with the relics at number 4. Not every relic can be a banger and this one most definitely is not. The small fringe situations this could be useful are outweighed by most of the relics here. Without wanting to give anything away for the rankings, I wouldn't recommend you use this. On to the Fs now. Starting with Faith Absolute, model with a Vexella Magnifica only. The Faith Absolute replaces the model's Vexella and it loses the Custodes Vexella ability. Instead, all friendly Imperium infantry and biker units within 6 inches of the bearer in the morale phase auto pass morale tests. And the bearer can attempt to deny one psychic power per enemy psychic phase as if it were a psyker. Phew. That was lengthy, and believe me, it was not worth it. It's not as bad as the other Relic Banners, but this could really only see play for its anti psyker abilities. If pure Psychic Armies start popping up, you'll see this banner start being taken. On the whole, the minus one to hit banner is better, and if you're in soup, then you'd want to be taking the 5++ plus plus Invulnerable banner instead and saving your Relic for something else. Fulminaris Aggressor, model with a Vexilla Defensor only. This replaces the model's Vexilla and it loses the model's Vexilla ability. Instead, all friendly Imperium and infantry biker units within 6 inches of the bearer in the morale phase auto pass morale tests. Plus, it is an actual weapon. Shooting is ranged 8 inches, assault d6, strength 4, AP minus 1, damage 1. The auto hits, and in melee, it lets them hit at strength 7, AP minus 1, damage 1. This makes your Vexilla a gun and gives it an alright melee profile. Honestly though, you take a Vexilla for the abilities, you don't want a weapon. I'm happy to be corrected, but I have no idea why this would ever be taken or used in a game. Thus, it doesn't get a pithy line from me. Into the G's now, with a Gatekeeper. Model with a Guardian Spear only. Replaces the Guardian Spear and has the profile when shooting, range 24 inches, rapid fire 3, strength 4, AP minus 1, damage 2. And in melee, lets your shield captain hit at strength 6, AP minus 3, damage D3. It has a special ability that lets you overwatch on a 3 plus. It's a pretty cute relic, lets you get some extra shots in, and the overwatch buff is nice. Truth be told, if you want it for the overwatch buff, you're probably playing custodies wrong. As you never want to be charged, you want to be the charger. Into the O's now, Obliteratum. Models with the Ballistis Grenade Launcher only. Obliteratum replaces it and is range 12 inches, assault 1, strength 10, AP minus 4, damage D3. 
Essentially, it's a wrist-mounted antimatter grenade launcher. What's not to love? It's a nice relic that's fun and fluffy, but doesn't pack enough shots or a punch to justify taking it in competitive scenarios. Into the final five now, kicking it off with Rainment of Sorrows. Roll a d6 every time a friendly Adeptus Custodes infantry or biker model is destroyed within six inches of the bearer. Before removing it as a casualty, on a four plus it can either shoot one of its weapons or make one attack. Cannot be comboed with the even in death stratagem. I honestly really like the idea of this relic and especially the fluff behind it, as the shroud was sat at the foot of the golden throne for a century as a reminder of the custodie's greatest defeat. Honestly though, it's effectively a worse company ancient banner from the Space Marines Codex, as you don't get the plus one leadership. If the meta shifts to running a huge blob of sword and board custodians up the middle, it could potentially see play, but even then, you'd probably want the minus one to hit banner to keep them alive. Into the T's now, the Castellan's Mark. If the bearer is on the battlefield at the beginning of the game, but before first turn, you can remove them and up to one friendly custodies unit within six inches of them, and set them up again following mission rules. They must be set up on the battlefield. This is a bit of a highly telegraphed trick play, but if your opponent falls for it, you could redeploy a big block unit and refuse a flank or get better sightlines. You could also next level your opponent by them thinking you're going to do it and not actually doing it. But it would be a bit of a waste of a relic in my view. Next up, the Praetorian Plate. Terminator models only. When you set the bearer up, choose a friendly Imperium character. At the end of your opponent's charge phase, if there's an enemy model within one inch of that character, you can remove the bearer and even if they were not on the battlefield, set them up within three inches of that character and within one inch of an enemy model. The bearer is not considered to have charged. The current only way to use this is the literal definition of one trick pony and you will hurl a Vexillus Praetor up the board and then drop in a huge block of infantry via the Vexilla Teleport Homo stratagem. This is another highly telegraphed bait move that in some Bearhammer games though may work if no one has seen it before and is always guaranteed to get a good response from your opponent. Now onto the penultimate relic and the final of the T's. The Veiled Blade. Models with the Sentinel Blade only. This replaces it and has the following profile for shooting. Range 12 inches, pistol 2, strength 4, AP 0, damage 1. And for melee hits, at strength 5, AP minus 3, damage D3. When the bearer fights within 3 inches of an objective, they get plus 2 attacks with the weapon. This relic has some really cool fluff, as it's only given to a custodian who has vowed to recover an occupant from the dark cells. Unfortunately though, that doesn't make up for it still being a sentinel blade and doesn't make it any better than the other base weapon options of a Castellan Axe or Guardian Spear. The only reason you'll take this is for fluff. Last up, Wraith Angelus. Model with a Vexilla Magnifica only. This replaces the model's Vexilla and it loses the Vexilla ability. Instead, all friendly Imperium infantry and bike units within 6 inches of the bearer in the morale phase auto pass morale test. Once per battle, in your movement phase, if the bearer does not move, roll a d6 for each unit, friend or foe, within 6 inches. On a 4+, plus, the unit suffers d3 mortal wounds, on a 5+, plus if it's a character, and on a 6+, plus if it's Adeptus Custodes. In most cases, I normally open the final entry to be reviewed with saying last, but certainly not least. In this case though, this is definitely the worst relic we have. It replaces your great Custodes Vexilla ability with an auto pass morale ability and a once per game ability that forces you to stand still and can hurt you. The hardest of hard passes. Moving on swiftly now to the rankings, starting with the trash tier. To the surprise of absolutely nobody, Wraith Angelus and Fulminaris Aggressor. Starting off strong with the two weakest relic banners. Next up are our basic weapon replacement relics, a morale effect on a stick, Emperor's Light, Gatekeeper, the Overwatching Guardian Spear, and the Objective Capturing Veiled Blade. Rounding out our trash tier, we have the poor man's Space Marine Ancient Banner, Rainment of Sorrows. Moving on now to better things, Fringe Tier. These relics can supplement specific army builds or be helpful in certain matchups, starting with everyone's favourite pocket railgun, Obliteratum, followed up by the Vexilla Catapult Party Trick, the Praetorian Plate, the anti psyker effect on a stick, Faith Absolute, and one of my personal fluff favourites, a chain to hit enemy characters with and give them depression, Auric Shackles. 
and rounding it out with the fanciest of fancy shoulder pads, Castellan's Mark. Into the top tier now, for the best of the best relics that our enemies always expect to see. It's not great for stealth, but everyone's favourite shrieking box, Eagle Eye. And finally, everyone's favourite forbidden steed, Auric Aquilus. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment below if you agree or disagree with my ranking. I'll catch you next time.